Hello everybody, welcome back to another video by Dissociated. This is a channel that's dedicated to erasing the stigma that surrounds dissociative identity disorder, which used to be known as multiple personality disorder, and educating people about the psychology and biology that is involved. My name is Chloe, I'm the host of the system, which means that I'm the alter, or personality, that's out the most often, and today I'm going to be telling you about ways that you can communicate with your system if you do have DID or OSDD. Now OSDD stands for Otherwise Specified Dissociative Disorder, and it's known as a slightly different form of DID. I will be going into more detail about OSDD in another video, which will be a debunking DID video, so stay tuned for that. Now, when it comes to communicating with alters, there is a lot to cover, so this video will be split into two parts. Part one, this video will be about communicating externally with your system. If you're new to DID, you might already be thinking, whoa, Chloe, hold on. What's a system? I don't know about any of this terminology. We do have a whole video on terminology relating to dissociative identity disorder. If you are new here, you can have a look at that up there. But essentially, a system is the collective term for all the alters that reside within one body. It's a way to refer to everyone in one go. For example, we're the dissociated system. The dissociated system is a name that refers to everybody that lives in this body. Okay, so you want to learn how to communicate better with the alters in your system. Maybe you have no communication at all. Maybe you're not sure if you even have DID or OSDD. Or maybe you're starting to notice some weird signs and want to reach out. How can you do this? It's very difficult to try and reach in towards the headspace which is where the alters reside, inside the mind, essentially. The psychovisual space that the mind has created to visualise the way that the mind has been compartmentalised through amnesia due to trauma when you have DID. So let's start with the external stuff. How can you communicate with your alters without having to do any kind of psychoanalyzing or trying to listen to voices or trying to communicate with an inner world if you don't know whether you have one or not? Not everybody with DID will have an inner world. If you don't know what inner worlds are, we have lots of videos on those as well and you'll be able to find them up here or in the description box below. Okay, so the easiest way to start reaching out to alters in your system, regardless of whether you have good communication already or whether you're completely new to this is by leaving notes. Post-it notes are such a lifesaver because what you may do in the body may be completely different from the routines that other alters do in the body. So if you were to just leave notes in places where you'd be likely to check, that doesn't necessarily mean that other alters in your system are going to be checking there. They also may not know to check for anything because they might not know that you're trying to reach out to them or they might not be interested in communicating with you yet. Communication is a two-way street. Be aware that it might take some time before alters in your system feel comfortable enough to reach back out to you. This goes for whether you're a host, so the person who is in the body most often, or an alter trying to reach out to your host. Be patient and don't give up. So this is why I like post-it notes. Post-it notes can be stuck anywhere. So sticking them on walls, on fridges, cupboards, anywhere that is kind of necessary to daily life. If you're going past this area, you're going to notice a big like pink or yellow green sticky note stuck where you need to be going with writing on it. That's going to make you stop and think, I didn't leave that there, what is this? If you're trying to get somebody's attention, leaving notes, leaving reminders for things that your alters might need to do or the rest of the system needs to do, we have a meeting at this time on this day, don't forget, write this down, or I've written something and I want you guys to read it, I've left notes for you, here's where you can find it, please communicate with me. Or just things like, today's bin day, don't forget to take out the bins everybody. If you're trying to use these notes to encourage things like chores, as I was saying, taking the bins out, or you have something that you need to do, 
it's very useful to have a fridge magnet or a whiteboard somewhere in your house. We have three. <laughs> Whiteboards especially are very, very useful because obviously you can wipe off and rewrite whatever needs to be done. So if somebody needs to add something, but oh my God, there's no pen around or there's no room left on this sticky note. I don't know where the sticky note block is. I don't have much time before I switch back out. You can just grab the pen that's usually attached to the whiteboard and just write a note. You may not know that your attempts at communicating are being successful, are being heard or seen. So with a whiteboard, people can leave notes saying like, heard, received, done, tick things off. It can also then become a routine of, okay, I'm going to the fridge. Ah, what's new on the whiteboard today? It becomes a routine to check. Has anybody left any notes for me? Is there anything I need to do? Has something happened that I wasn't aware of that we need to change or work on together? Is there something that I need to know about that I haven't been able to understand yet? So things like post-it notes, fridge magnets, and whiteboards are very useful just for leaving notes and being able to communicate back and forward to each other, but they can also be useful for directing alters to then look somewhere else which leads us on to our next point. We keep a system journal. It is very difficult to keep a system journal. <laughs> we have a whole video on it from when we really first started creating system journals for us all to communicate in, and you can see that video up there or in the description box below. But a system journal is essentially a diary that you all keep together. We have two different journals. One is dedicated to helping us organize daily life with the ID, which is the one you'll see in the video that I've linked. And the other one is sort of like a diary for all of us. It's difficult to get into this routine, especially when you don't have much time in the body or it's unusual for you to front. The last thing you're gonna wanna do is spend the time that you finally got in the body, in the outside external world, writing about what's happened in the inner world, you know? But it's useful to try and get into the habit of just, okay, what's the date? What's the time? Who's out? So it's easy to keep track of who was fronting when. This isn't necessary, but it can really help to reduce amnesia and to help other alters understand what's going on. It can reduce a lot of stress, a lot of fear, and it is very, very helpful. The most useful thing for us about keeping a diary is being able to communicate about our needs and our healing. I'm aware because of what I can hear, what I can see back in the inner world and voices that I hear all the time of my alters chatting to each other or talking in the inner world or just feelings that I get bleeding through. Again, we also have a video on this, my gosh. If you, if you are new to this, there is so much on this channel that may be helpful. So honestly, just have a look through our videos. But uh, yeah, there's also a video on like different types of switching um, being co-conscious, blending, bleeding through to one another, having fragmented thoughts and images, sounds that don't make any sense. That's where I get most of my information from, but it's so much easier to write down, okay guys, this is how I'm feeling right now. This is something that we need to work on. I'm scared, anxious, feeling positive, feeling worried, getting new memories, or you know, I'm hearing something about so-and-so in the system. Are they okay? What can we do to help you? Please reach out to us. And you can also write down like, okay, these are decisions we need to make as a community, as a system together. These could be big decisions about what you want to do with the body, what you want to do for jobs, what you want to do in the future, maybe there's been a big issue that's come up, whether that's in a relationship, whether that's to do with family or romance or friendship or co-workers, bosses, anything like that. Making decisions together as a group and getting your alters feedback on the decisions that you're going to make can be so helpful and help avoid so much drama later on. If you've made a decision and you didn't realize that somebody else in the system is very, very, very unhappy about that or wish that it had been handled in a different way, you will catch so much, <laughs> so much backlash from that. It is so good to get into the habit of checking or at least communicating. It doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that your system mates are saying. It just means that it's useful for everyone to feel like they're being included. And this includes persecutors too. So system journals and life organizers where you can keep a list of 
who was in your system? What are their ages? What are their roles? Do you have an inner map where you have visual representation of what your inner world looks like and where things are kept? Do you have set rules for being in the system or for being in the body? So for example, us, nobody's allowed to have a haircut unless most of us, at least the executive protectors of our system have agreed, yes, this is okay to do. So we will no longer have Kyle cutting the hair very, very short, without my say so, because I don't want that. We communicate and we come to decisions together. So we all have to make agreements and allowances. I do things for Kyle that I don't particularly want to do and Kyle lets me have the hair long and you know, lets us you know shave body hair and things like that because I feel more comfortable doing that, for example. I say that it's okay for him to wear binders when he's in the body, even though that's something that brings me extreme discomfort. You have to learn to, you know, give and take with your system and writing in a book where you can keep that all together is very, very helpful, but it does take a lot of work. We've had so many failed <laughs> like <laughs> journals, but really nothing is a failure. It's all working, taking steps, learning experiences, towards being a healthier and a more communicative system. Okay, so maybe some of your alters can't write. Maybe they're too young to read, or maybe they've just never learned. What do we do then? We are very lucky to have a lot of access to technology, and if you're watching this video, then I'm assuming you may have a phone or a laptop or something similar to that. I know not everybody does, and that's okay, but if you do, it can be very, very useful to leave voice messages, voice recordings to people, and on a lot of apps like that, you can pin those voice messages to your desktop screen or your your home screen so that that's one of the first things you'll see when you open up your phone is oh somebody's pinned a voice message click play so even alters who may be blind if, if you're in a body that can't see or if you have an alter who has very very bad eyesight then they'll be able to listen to that voice message you can also leave video messages which we find very very useful because in writing and over text notes written down or typed out it can be difficult to get an understanding of the emotion behind what's being written and can be easy to accidentally misunderstand leaving videos is very very helpful for. You can also get notepad apps on your phone which are useful just as notepads but also you can pin those to the home screen and sometimes it's really useful to say like check the system diary or please write in the system diary while you're out, things like that because we're on our phones all the time. I'm sure most of you probably feel the same way about them but it's easier to, oh my, oh, what's the time? Or you know, where am I? Click, oh, check the system diary, something's happened. Or make sure you do this today, we have an appointment, don't miss it. It's much easier to navigate life with all the amnesia that comes with DID because when you're an alter, you won't remember essentially what's happened when another person has been fronting in the body most of the time. Writing on your arms or your skin can also be useful, not in permanent marker, <laughs> but in a pen that washes off. When we were first coming to terms with being a system, or when I was first coming to terms with being part of a system and having DID. This was something that happened very regularly. Also lipstick on mirrors was something that happened while I was in university, which scared the life out of me, made me think of horror movies and it just really freaked me out, but it worked. <laughs> it caught my attention and I was receiving the messages. If you don't have your phone to hand or you, know, you don't know where the whiteboards are or the post-it notes, there's no paper around. If you've got some lipstick or you've got a pen, it's useful to always carry a pen with you anyway. Just write something down on your on. Whoever's fronting is gonna see that. Speaking about technology, there is also a phone app that I would like to recommend. It's called Serif. It was originally designed for playwriting and it's an app where you can essentially make your own sort of like a messenger chat, but it's just for you. So you can create your own profiles and they're just very, very small, just literally a name, a gender, and then you can put a little photo and it's just one click to change between them. So you can have a whole like messenger layout. You just have to click on who's fronting and type in a message and it'll come up as someone else messaging the chat. So whenever someone else is out, they can check that chat 
and leave a message. It's very, very quick, very, very easy, and so simple that even littles can use it. It's very, very easy and has been very useful for us in the past. So this was part one of communication and how to communicate within a system. I hope that you found some of these tips helpful. If you're more interested in other ways you can communicate internally and what the hearing of voices is like in a world and how you can use being in a system to actually function almost like a game of Chinese whispers and the buddy method. If you're interested in all that kind of stuff, I'll be talking about that in the next video. So please stay tuned. If you are new to DID and the channel, please have a look at some of our videos. I'm sure that there will be something here that can help you. I hope that you all stay safe and that you have a lovely day. Thank you for visiting the channel and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Lots of love everybody. Bye. Thank you.